How's it everyone? Welcome back to another entry in my court checklist series right here on Open Court. I'm Kent and today I want to introduce my full racket collection to you guys. I have done some individual reviews. I haven't talked about every single racket I own, but today I just want to briefly introduce all the rackets that I own, collect, and basically play with. So let's get into it. All right, so starting with head rackets. My favorite brand is Head, so I have the most head rackets out of any brand. So right now, I'm currently playing mostly with the Head Boom Pro. Uh, this was actually the first racket that I ever reviewed on this channel, and when I demoed it, I was very surprised uh, by the balance of control, power. Spin level is okay, but I just really like the overall uh, balance between power, control, and feel. So this is one of my current favorite rackets. I also really love the Graphene 360 Speed Pro. This was released back in 2018. This one also gets great control because of the denser 18 by 20 string pattern. Great baseline stick. Also, we got another one of my favorites here. This is the Head Extreme Tour, the Night Edition, limited edition paint job. It looks really nice with this black and yellow. This racket gets tremendous amounts of spin. I hit the best kick serves out of any racket that I own with this because it has these unique funnel shaped spin grommets here. But the extremes in the past have been way too heavily skewed towards power. This one has a nice bit of control because the beam is thinner, 98 square inches. So these three, the Speed Pro, Extreme Tour, and the Boom Pro are my current favorite rackets that I own. I also have, string is broken here, but I have a Speed MP. This is the Graphene 360 edition. This one is a very, very open 16 by 19 string pattern. I haven't used this one as much because the control isn't as great, but it is a great tweener racket. It gets good power, good pace. Uh, this one is actually extended, so you can't tell on this um, camera maybe, but it's slightly, you can see like this, it's about a quarter inch longer. I had it extended because I wanted a little bit more power on my serve with this, so the longer the racket, the more power you can get. So this is the Speed MP. I also have, this is the Graphene Touch Speed Adaptive Series. So the Adaptive Series came out a while ago. It came with a tuning kit that actually allowed you to play with the specs. They had uh, different types of grommets that changes the string pattern between 16, 19 and 16 by 16. And the weight is different too, so you can add a little bit more stability or make it lighter to get a little bit more whip. It has a heavy and a light butt cap here that you can also use to change the balance point. They also have these spacers that allow you to extend the handle to make the racket a little bit longer. And I really, I really thought that this adaptive series was a great idea. It allowed me to customize my specs. Unfortunately, it didn't last. It wasn't very popular. This series was incredibly dampened because of the Crybon technology in the throat. And this, this series wasn't really uh, well received, but I did like the idea of an adaptive series and I hope Head brings it back one day. All right, next up, we got a couple of uh, baseline sticks. These are the 2013 Head Graphene uh, Speed Pros. This is the first edition Graphene came out back in 2013. These to this day are some of my favorite baseline sticks. It has a tighter 18 by 20 string pattern than the current Speed Pros. The balance point and the specs have changed a little bit, but these rackets are incredibly stable, great from the baseline. So I got two of these, and I also have one here. This is the same exact racket as this. It's just, it's a limited edition paint job. As you can see, it says speed on the inner frame here. This is, uh, to my knowledge, only about 600 of these black 2013 Graphene Speed Pros were ever made. I bought this used in Japan and the specs are the same. I just, I really like this paint job. It's, it's really sexy, this black. So these are some of my favorite baseline sticks of all time. And lastly, to finish up my head lineup, I got the head Liquid Metal Radical MP here and the Liquid Metal Instinct MP. These are two classic frames. The Liquid Metal technology is located in the corners over here. These are some of the most responsive rackets that I've ever used. A lot of pros still use the liquid metal mold. They just paint the rackets to look more like uh, the, the recent paint jobs for the marketing. The Liquid Metal Radical MP is a very light racket. It's unfortunately a bit too light for me, which is why I've added weight here and there, but this is a great all-around stick. 
but if you're looking for stability and power from the baseline, this Instinct MP is hard to beat. It, this is very head heavy, so it, it tilts more towards the head, but because of that, it has incredible stability. If you play against players who hit the ball hard, this is not gonna twist in your hand. It's not gonna lose to the momentum of your opponent's shots. So this is a better overall baseline stick, but this I think is a better all around stick from both the baseline and the net. So these are two classic liquid metal rackets. All right, next up we got Yonex rackets. So we'll start with this one. I have three Yonex rackets. This one you guys will probably recognize. I've done a full review on this. This is the Yonex E-Zone DR98. This is still one of the most popular DRs of all time. It's quite stiff, but it's also very powerful. Gets a decent amount of control. I think that this is definitely skews more towards the power side. This is a very popular baseliners racket because of the feel. The more recent Yonexes with the dampening technology have kind of muted the feel a little bit. I like the rackets of the past that didn't focus so much on dampening. So this is the DR98. This came in two paint jobs. There was a, a green, greenish yellow version and this is the blue version. I like this version better and I also bought this in Japan. Next, we got my current probably favorite Yonex racket that I own. This is the Yonex V-Core SV98. This one also is a limited edition paint job available only in Japan. I like limited edition paint jobs because it makes my rackets a little bit more unique. So this is a black and white one. The original one comes in a red and black glossy finish. This one is unique because it has a 16 by 20 string pattern. The V-Core 98s of recent years have ditched that 20th cross string and only has 19 cross strings. But because this has 20, it actually gets a decent amount of control, which is why I like it. And so this is probably my favorite current Yonex racket that I own. I'm also testing out a new string here, so that review will be up soon, so look forward to that. And lastly, I have a Yonex racket that I received from a friend and I've never used before. So this is the V-Core Dual G. So let me know if you guys want me to do a review on this. I've never used it. It's kind of old. I heard Stan Wawrinka maybe used to endorse this racket or maybe a version of this, but the paint job is cool. It has this like jungle texture, orange and green. Um, but yeah, let me know if you guys are interested in seeing a review of the Dual G in the comments because I've never used this before. My friend gave it to me and it's just been sitting in the closet. So I might try it. It has this leather grip. So yeah, let me know. All right, moving on to Babala. So I got my favorite Babala rackets, currently not strong, but this is the Pure Strike 98. And this is the Wimbledon edition paint job. Like I said, I like limited edition paint jobs. This one looks really nice with this green, fluorescent green color. This is the second generation Pure Strike 98. The original has that orange accent here. This was also known as the Project 17 when it was in development because it came out in 2017. The original Pure Strike wasn't favorably received to say the least and they overhauled the specs a lot with this second generation. The third gen has been popular as well. The fourth gen I heard is going to be coming out soon, hopefully next year. I'm excited to try that out, but this is currently my favorite uh, Babla racket, the Pure Strike line, because it gets the most balance between power, spin, and control. And my other Babla racket, this is the Aero Pro Drive GT. This one I think came out back in 2010, and this is the Roland Garros French Open edition. So I got a Wimbledon Pure Strike and a French Open Aero Pro Drive. I like limited paint jobs, what can I say? This one is a very, very stiff racket. It's either this or the DR98, I think, in my collection that are probably the stiffest. Oh, well, the 2013 Speed Pro is also pretty stiff, but this gets great spin as the Aero Pro Drive line should, um, but I don't use this racket that much because it's very stiff, it's hard to control. I like stiffness, but this one actually just, it, it just feels stiff without really giving me much response. I don't get that dwell time that I usually one, maybe if I use a little bit more of a responsive string, but I don't take this out on the court as often as I used to. I might give it a try again. I do have a review on this channel, but the AeroPro Drive GT and the Pure Strike 98, these are my Babala rackets. All right, next up we got Prince. So Prince is, doesn't get the love it deserves in my opinion. And this one is one of my favorite Prince rackets. This is the Prince Phantom 100X. It has a tight, 18 by 20 string pattern, it has a 100 square inch head, ultra thin beam, super buttery flex, incredibly soft. This is the softest racket for sure out of all the rackets I own. Um, 
Well, actually, maybe the Graphene Touch Speed Adaptive is pretty, is pretty soft too, but this is definitely up there in terms of soft feel. I love this racket for its control and it because it's so thin, the beam, it swings through the air incredibly fast. It gets great slices because it knifes through the slices through contact. I can pronate it over my head for the kick surf. So for an 1820 string pattern, it gets a decent amount of spin on my kick. So this is my favorite Prince racket because of its control. I also have a Prince Textream Phantom 100 here. This is a orange edition available in Japan. This one has a very open 1618 string pattern. I don't use this racket that often because it's so hard to control and the launch angle is so high because of this open string pattern. But when I bought this in Japan, I bought it for dirt cheap and it is actually a pretty good racket. It gets good feel. So this one I'm actually uh, thinking about picking up again. I don't use it often. And this one is something that I also don't use often anymore, but this is the Techstream uh, Tour 95. So we got the 100 here and we got the 95 here. This is a 1618, this is a 1619. This one is definitely more in my wheelhouse. I typically don't like 95 square inches because it has such a small sweet spot, but this one cuts through the air very nicely as well. It's very headlight, good control. It's just a little bit hard for me to hit the return square in the center, so I don't pick this racket up that often. But Prince, I believe, still makes high quality rackets and they're criminally underrated. Please give Prince a chance, check out their rackets and their strings. So those are my Prince rackets. All right, and now we're down to my last two rackets. So I got one Wilson racket here. This is the only Wilson racket I own. This is the K-Factor 6195. I've also done a full review of this on my channel. I like this racket a lot. It gets good control. It really knifes through the slices and uh, very maneuverable at the net. It doesn't have a whole lot of power, as you can imagine, for a 95, but it does have these ridges over here on the side that make it more stable than your typical 95. A lot of players still like this K-Factor. It is a bit on the stiffer side, but it's in that area that I really like because it's very responsive. This is the only Wilson racket I own, and honestly, I bought it because I like the colors, and I also wanted one Wilson racket in my lineup. But this is probably one of my favorite. I definitely like this 95 better than the Prince Tour 95. And the last racket in my collection is a Dunlop. I've used this racket on my channel before. This is the CX200. I've never done a review of this racket on my channel. I don't really feel like it's necessary. I'm waiting for the new one to come out. I know there's one after this one. This is two generations ago. Um, but it's been a while since the CX200, the most recent edition came out. I'm just gonna wait for the next update for this to review. But this one also gets pretty good control and it's a 1619, but it's a unique 1619 because the cross strings are very tight together here. So it doesn't pack a whole lot of power compared to some other 98 uh, square inch rackets, but that's why it gets great control. I love this racket on my backhand. For some reason, the, the way the racket and the strings grip, uh, grab the ball, it, it hits better on my backhand side. But regardless, this is a good racket all around. Um, maybe you guys have noticed the recurring theme in my racket. I like rackets that are a little bit more on the control oriented side, but not all the way over. Like for example, the CX200 Tour would be the super controlled, very advanced version of this racket. I like rackets that help me out with a little bit of power and spin. I'm not super good. So this is why I like these types of tweener rackets that are kind of more on the side of control. So that does it for my full racket collection. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know what your favorite racket in my collection is and let me know some of the rackets that you guys have. I would also love to add to my collection one day. I know I don't need any more, but I like tinkering and I like playing with a lot of different rackets. So thank you for sticking with me through this uh, video. And as always, if you guys like this content, be sure to overhead smash that like and subscribe button and I'll see you on an open court.